Yeah, I hope that you hearing me This is the future, all about cyber security Talking about the hackers, I'm just trying to warn you From the one and only legend, the cyber informer Hey, Yeah, yeah, this is the cyber reformer uh, This is the cyber reformer, let's go It's time for the Cyber Security Business Connect and Protect Central Coast How-To Video I am Michael Trimblett, the Cyber Informer, at Cyber underscore Informer on Twitter. Today we'll be continuing the YubiKey series. In this video, we'll be setting up the YubiKey to secure your login to your business network. If your network is running a domain, in other words, running a Windows server, you are likely configured as a domain. I will show you how to configure your Windows server and workstations to securely log in with a YubiKey. Get your propeller hats ready, this is very technical. Let's go. For details on what a YubiKey is, go back and watch the Q&A video, How do I use multi-factor authentication without a phone, introducing YubiKey. As we've already covered what a YubiKey is in that video, we'll move on. Windows and Mac use the Personal Identity Verification or PIV card standard for smart card verification to log into the Windows operating system. PIV uses security certificates to prove your identity. The way certificates determine your identity is out of scope for these videos, but take my word for it, it is mathematically secure and computationally infeasible to try and guess keys. This is why they are the preferred method of identification validation. The US federal government uses PIV for accessing federally controlled facilities and information systems. As we'll be logging into a Windows domain, we'll see how certificates are configured on the server and workstation. The YubiKey PIV is secure storage for the user certificate. Warning. This is not for the faint-hearted. This requires configuration of servers and workstations. It requires renewal of certificates after the expiration time, which, if not planned for, could cause downtime for the entire organization. This configuration requires a specific set of YubiKeys. This demonstration will use a YubiKey 5 series key. We need to make sure both your servers and workstations support YubiKeys. The rule of thumb is you must be running Windows Server 2012 R2 or above, as your server and Windows 8 or above on your workstation. Installation of the YubiKey mini driver is required on all computers the key will be used on. If used in a remote desktop environment, the mini driver must be installed on both the source or the client and the destination or the server. There are plenty of gotchas in this configuration. As mentioned in the warning slide earlier, certificates expire. By default, the root certificate expires at five years. By default, the user certificates expire at one year. By default, user certificates auto-renew six weeks prior to expiration. Computers which YubiKey is used on must be on the network to renew the certificate. In other words, if you have a laptop that is used in the office and taken home, and the renewal prompt appears at home, the certificate can't be updated on the YubiKey unless it is connected to a VPN or on the network at the office. Non-renewal of certificates will mean that the user will be locked out. And probably the biggest gotcha is a non-renewal of the root certificate which will mean the entire organization will be locked out once it expires. It's very important to diarize these expiration dates to make sure reminders are set to ensure smooth transition at time of expiry. I'm not sure about you, but in five years, I won't remember the key is about to expire. Management of this is important. Remote desktop requires a special configuration of the mini driver on the server. Remote desktop connections must not be enabled for network level authentication or the connection will fail. There is a technical reason behind this involving Kerberos tickets, but this is way out of scope for this video. Just know that this needs to be unticked if you want to use remote desktop connection to that workstation or server. Using YubiKey to administer Hyper-V servers can only be done with Generation 2 servers. Enhanced session mode must be enabled on the guest server to pass through USB. When connecting to a server, set local resources to pass through smart cards. We're going to configure a server and workstation from scratch to support YubiKey login. This is hard. Whilst this video shows you how to easily configure servers, support of such systems may go above the heads of some IT professionals who are not experienced with digital certificates. This can get complex, and if you're not familiar with digital certificates or Active Directory, it's best to call in the IT professionals. This demonstration is rated 5 propeller hats out of 5. Let's set up YubiKey on a domain network. In other words, on a network with a server. First things first, we need to install the certificate services role on either your domain controller or a member server. We do that through the server manager dashboard. Add the Active Directory certificate services role. Then hit next a few times. Make sure certification authority is ticked and click next. And now hit install. 
Wait for it to install. Sometimes you need to restart the server, sometimes you don't. So be prepared, you might have to restart. This can take a few minutes to install. Once it's done, hit Configure Active Directory Certificate Services on the destination server. We give it the login credentials, which is usually just the administrator account, where we'll hit Next. Make sure we tick the box Certification Authority and click Next. We're going to make sure it's an Enterprise CA, Next. We want to select Root CA and click Next. New private key is fine, so we'll click Next. We can accept the defaults here, we'll click Next. We can keep the default name, so we'll just click Next. Keep the validity period of five years, which is fine. We'll click Next. The default location for logs is fine as well. Next. And then click on Configure. By default, Windows does not recognize the security key format that we've just created. We need to update Group Policy to allow us to use Elliptic Curve Cryptography Certificates. To do this, open up Group Policy Editor, and we're going to create a new GPO just for the YubiKey. Right click on the domain and select create a GPO in this domain. I'll give it the name YubiKey. Then we'll edit the new group policy object. Right click on it and select edit. Now we need to update the group policy to allow for elliptic curve certificates. Under computer configuration, go to policies, administrative templates, Windows components, smart card. Now enable the group policy, allow ECC certificates to be used for logon and authentication. And click OK. We could either wait for group policy to update or we could force a group policy update. Let's force a group policy update. Go into PowerShell and use the command GP update slash force. Group policy update, so we're good to go on the server. We can check to make sure that this group policy has updated by using the rsop.msc command. This gives you the resultant set of policy screen. We can now confirm from this screen that that policy is enabled. This will show all of the policies that are enabled for this user or computer. All we have to do is find the policy that we're interested in. This one's gonna be under computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, and smart card. We can see there that the setting is enabled and it's under the GPO name YubiKey, which is exactly where we put it. We'll close out of some of these screens, back to the group policy. Now there is one more section I wanna show you. Under Windows Settings, Security Settings, Local Policies, and Security Options. We can set a group policy to determine how your computer responds to the YubiKey being unplugged. Scroll down and find the group policy Interactive Logon Smart Card Removal Behavior. Double click on it, and we can then define this policy. By default, there is no action, but if we remove the key, we can set it to either lock the workstation, force a log off, or disconnect if it is a remote desktop session. It is up to the business management to determine which one they would prefer. I'll just define it as no action. I'll apply an OK. Now we need to create a certificate template. Now this certificate template will be used by each user to populate your YubiKey with an authentication certificate. Go to the run command and type in certtmpl.msc and hit OK. This brings up the certificate templates console. Scroll down and right click on smart card logon. Select duplicate template. There are quite a number of changes that we need to make to this template to make it work. First things first, we need to look at the compatibility. Certification authority and certificate recipient, we need to make sure are at the same levels as what your server and your workstations are. So if you have a 2016 or 2019 server, you choose server 2016 in the certification authority section. Now we need to know the minimum operating system that you have on your network. If you have a Windows 7 machine, but everything else is Windows 10, we still need to select Windows 7. If everything is Windows 10, we select Windows 10, which is what we'll do in this demonstration. Click OK to the screen that pops up. Click on the General tab. In there, we'll type in the name of the template. In this case, we're gonna call it YubiKey. 
we can see the validity period of one year and renewal period of six weeks. They're both okay to stay as they are. Now we need to tick the box next to publish certificate in Active Directory and also do not automatically re-enroll if a duplicate certificate exists in Active Directory and click the apply button. Click on request handling tab. Keep the purpose as signature and encryption. Tick the box include symmetric algorithms allowed by the subject. Tick the box for automatic renewal of smart card certificates. Use the existing key if a new key cannot be created. Change the radio button to prompt the user during enrollment. And click apply. Go to the cryptography tab. Update the provider category to key storage provider. Change the algorithm name to ECDH P384. Minimum key size can stay the same. Hit the radio button requests must use one of the following providers and put a tick next to Microsoft Smart Card Key Storage Provider with a request hash of SHA256 and hit the apply button. Now in the security tab, we add in the user or group that this certificate is going to apply to. In this case, it's going to be all users in the network or domain users. We'll add in domain users. Check name to make sure it's spelled correctly and then click OK. Click on domain users and now we need to set the permissions for these users. We need to make sure we have read in the allow column ticked. We need to also tick enroll and auto re-enroll. Once this is done, we can click apply and OK. And now we have successfully set up the template that we're going to use with the YubiKey. We're not done on the server yet. There are a couple of additional settings that we need to change. Right click on the start button and go to the run command. Type in CERTSRV.MSC and press enter. We need to add the certificate template to the certification authority. To do that, we go to certificate templates under the server name. Right click in a white space and select new certificate template to issue. Scroll down to the YubiKey, select it, and click OK. We can see now it's added to the top of the Certificate Template section. This can take up to eight hours to populate throughout your network, depending on how complex your network is. Most networks it will update instantly. Now we need to update four more group policies. Go to the Run command and type in gpmmc.msc to open up Group Policy Management. Under the domain, we should see our YubiKey group policy. Right click on this and select Edit. In Computer Configuration, go to Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Public Key Policies, and click on that. Click on Public Key Policies. Right click on Certificate Services Client Auto Enrollment and click on Properties. Change the configuration model to Enabled. Tick the boxes next to Renew Expired Certificates and Update Certificates that use Certificate Templates. Click OK. Now right click on Certificate Services Client Certificate Enrollment Policy and click Properties. Change configuration model to enabled and then click OK. Now we must update the same policies under user configuration. Under user configuration, go to policies, windows settings, security settings, and click on public key policies. Right click on certificate services client certificate enrollment policy and click on properties. Change configuration model to enabled and click OK. Right click on certificate services client auto enrollment and then click on properties. Change configuration model to enabled and put the ticks in the boxes that we did last time next to renew expired certificates and update certificates that use certificate templates. And click OK to save it. Now group policy has been updated, we need to do a group policy update. To do this, right click on the start button, go to PowerShell admin and type in the command gp update slash force and press enter. 
Once group policy is updated, we now can go to the workstation to update the YubiKey. On the Windows 11 workstation, you may get an icon down by the time that looks like a certificate. If you click onto that, it should launch the enrollment wizard. If the certificate is not there, we need to run the command manually. Open up Windows Terminal or Command Prompt and type in the command CERTREQ space dash enroll space YubiKey. This will now launch a wizard that will allow us to put a certificate on our YubiKey using the YubiKey template that we created earlier. On the wizard screen, click Next and then click Enroll. We now have the YubiKey plugged in. It will ask us for the pin of the YubiKey, which we will type in. It will now enroll our certificate on the YubiKey. We can now click Finish. The current user can now log into the Windows domain using that YubiKey. I'll sign out so we can see how it works. On the login screen, click on Sign In Options and click on the Smart Card. We can see that it's read our login details from the Smart Card. We enter our PIN and now we log in. No need to enter a password. Note that we don't have to use YubiKeys to log in for all users, only those that have been enrolled. So if I go back to log in with another user, like the admin of the network, which is Loyal IT, we can pop the Loyal IT password in and it will log us in. Now that we've tested the YubiKey login, we need to now enforce the login of the YubiKey for that user. To do that, we need to be back on the server. In the server manager, we go to Active Directory Users and Computers. We select the user by double clicking on it. Go to the Account tab. And in the Account Options section, put a tick next to Smart Card is required for interactive logon. And then click OK. Back on the workstation, if we try entering in the Cyber Informer's password, we will get denied. It tells us we must use Windows Hello or a Smart Card to sign in. We'll plug in the Smart Card and then click on Smart Card button. Now we can enter the PIN and it will log us in. That is everything to do with the setup of the YubiKey. But let's have a look at what's actually on the YubiKey. So if we go into the Start button and type in YubiKey Manager, click on YubiKey Manager and that will open up the YubiKey Manager screen. When we insert the key, we can then see the YubiKey that we have inserted. Go to Applications and down to PIV, P-I-V. This screen allows us to configure our pins under Pin Management. We can change the pin, change management key. We can see the certificates loaded. When we go in there, we can see the Security Server CA, Cyber Informer, that's the certificate on the key. That's what allows us to log into Windows. We can see that there's other slots for different types of certificates. And we can also reset the PIV, so we can reset everything back to factory defaults if we want. And finally, under Interfaces, we can see it has USB and NFC. We can turn on and off the different types of authentication based on the type of connection, USB or NFC. In this case, we're just going to leave them all on. We don't want to deny anything. And that concludes our walkthrough of the YubiKey on domain networks. Let's exit the propeller hat zone and wrap up the video. What do we learn? This can be hard. Once configured, it offers bulletproof security to domain networks. YubiKey brings enterprise grade security to your small medium business. Certificate management needs to be considered and planned for during implementation. For admins, it is complex. But for end users, secure login couldn't be easier. Thank you for joining me for a look at configuring YubiKey on a domain network. Multi-factor authentication on domain networks can be complex and expensive. In comparison to these expensive systems, YubiKey makes the infrastructure cheap and simple by using certificate services already available in Windows. Don't let the complexities of certificate management deter you from using it. It is a brilliant solution to securing your Windows domain login. Don't forget you can contact me via email, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Also, check out the podcast at loyalit.com.au slash podcast. Until next time, stay safe online. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. the Cyber Come Reformer. Hackers, you going down yeah. like, oh, yeah. This is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down, yeah. yeah.